As always, TechCrunch is where the action is. Today we're at SF Music Tech, uh, one of the leading events about the contemporary music, especially digital music business. And I'm with one of the leading figures in digital music, Evan Lowenstein. Oh. Now I'm talking to you, Evan. Oh, okay. Evan is, the, <clears throat> is, is, a, is a very well-known singer-songwriter in his day, and now he is the founder and the CEO of Stage It. Evan, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thanks so, Evan, me. last year you were on a panel which we televised on TechCrunch TV. Today I want to have a one-on-one -on -one with you and catch up about where you're it, or not where you're it, where you're at. With, where we're at. Sure. Not Stage At, but Stage It. Yes. Yes. So, so oh. the stage, <clears throat> Evan, is yours. Okay, so where we're at since, since then? Well, I think that... Well, uh, even to tell our audience, because not everyone will be familiar with Stage It, what, what exactly is it, what you're trying sure. to do, and what is the genesis of the business? Sure, so Stage It's a live video interactive platform, and what that basically means uh, is that we, we have found a way to allow artists to use live video to connect with their fans. For the folks at home, it might be easier to think about it in terms of... Uh, uh, that sort of sounded bad for the folks at home, but I'm just saying a simpler way to think about it would be um, a video Twitter, if you will. But we have a cable version of that in, in that we let the... Uh, well, we, other people have got video Twitters as well. Right, so, so we're, but we're only live, and we let the, uh, let the artist monetize. So okay. we give an artist the ability to go directly from their laptop uh, to the fans, and they can decide how long they want to play, how much they want to charge. And we also have a tip jar, um, of which we see 44% of our overall revenue comes from the tip jar. And uh, why that's meaningful is that we're, we understand that the audience at home has often said, the music buying public has said, if you give us a chance to show that, that we're willing to pay, if there's a good experience, we'll pay. We're seeing that, that that's actually the truth. Um, I think that a lot of the, the you know, reasons behind, I initially created the idea because I myself wanted to be able to tour and hit some of those pockets of fans around the world and I figured that by capitalizing on the connectivity of the internet and the advancements in broadcasting, I should be able to do so and there had to be a way. Um, but I think that while we're getting a lot of attention in the last couple of months is that people are finally realizing in the music industry specifically that, um, that we've been chasing a lot of phantom metrics over the last couple of years, if not eight years. Phantom metrics. Phantom metrics. So um, basically that would be um, a lot of the things like uh, followers on Twitter, uh, friends on, on MySpace, well, likes on told Facebook. I those were phantom. Okay, so YouTube views. I've had artists come up to me and tell me that they were the fastest um, video to uh, 1 million views and they've had a total of 38 million. I had this young, really nice girl group come up and tell me that and I said, great, and I, I was talking, about, uh, talking to them about how they were doing financially. Nothing. And um, I think the challenge is that everyone has been chasing these phantom metrics. So, Evan. Yes. Are you saying that all social media metrics are phantom? Is it all a bit of an invention, a, a, excusing the, uh, the inward a cloud to, to make yourself seem more important and more monetizable? Well, I'm not going to say that it's for that for those reasons, per se. It may very well be. Um, I'm just saying that from an artist for years, we've watched from an industry and they're just not translating into what I think people thought they would be. So all those social media experts are wrong? I'm, I'm, not, say, I'm not saying they're wrong. I think there is a value to social media. I think you, people need to have their expectations managed and understand the value of what these things are. Um, a record label made a huge bet on a band that had three million Twitter followers expecting they were going to do well into six figures for record sales their first week out and in turn did less than 3,000 copies. I think that, that when you see three million Twitter followers, you we perhaps expect a band to sell more than 3,000 records. That sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't. What we're working on at Stage right now is to come up with a term we call stage, stage power. Um, we're having a hell of a time taking an artist that comes into Stage It and says, how well will I do based on my social media metrics? Because we haven't been able to figure that out because some artists have millions of followers and can't do as well as some people who have thousands of followers. So there's something else that is driving fans at home to spend money, and that's a metric that we feel is, is something we should focus on right now. So Evan, beyond these phantom metrics, uh, there are going to be a lot of people watching this who have bands. Why should they be on stage it? What kind of revenue are you providing your bands? How many, people are on, how many bands are on stage it? We have uh, 800 bands have played actual shows today. We've had um, almost uh, 4,000 actually sign up. So. And, is it, and do you cur curate aggressively? Do you say no to a lot of people? We did early on. Now we've created a platform that allows uh, pretty much any artist to get on. Uh, it's a very short, maybe a uh, couple hour pr 
process where we just verify who they are, especially if they're more well-known artists. But why an artist should play, let me answer that question. An artist should play, um, your art, artists are already giving away free content all over the place. We're just another platform for them to actually monetize what they're doing. So um, you're giving away, your, you're connecting with your fans online through YouTube, through Facebook, through Twitter. We are another venue that allows you to use all of that you've created, all the top of this funnel to take these people someplace where you can actually turn it into something. So those phantom metrics hopefully can now become actually something of meaning. So what's your business model? Our business model is that we charge the artist nothing to come and create uh, a live interactive a streaming well, event that's not for their much fans. of a business model, charging the artists. We nothing. charge them nothing. We, I'm sorry, hit my mic. We charge the artists nothing up front, and we take uh, we give them 60% of the gross of everything they make. So you take 40%. We take 40% to cover all the overhead. We're fully licensed. We cover the credit card transactions, the broadband, the bandwidth, everything. And the revenue to the artist comes from the tip jar from fans. Is and that from right? tickets up up front and as well. Tickets, tickets to what? To the actual event. So we have a paywall up, uh, up front before you get. So, you, so, so it's not free. To it's watch on stage. No, you have other free platforms. We're not a free platform. So we're really hitting your top 2 to 5% of your fan base if you're an artist or. Um, and how are you doing in terms of revenue? We're doing fantastic. I mean, uh, I'm profitable? Not, we're not profitable yet, but we're well, going to be, be that fantastic. Well, we're, we're going to be profitable sooner than I think we all anticipated. So when I did you anticipate good. you'd be profitable? Uh, in about 100 years. So uh, <laughs> I think we'll be profitable by the end of this year. And, uh, and, and how many people work for you? We have nine full-time employees. So you, you need to be making significant revenue to become profitable. Yes. I think, that, I don't know, significant revenue, but it's all relative. Sure. And, and what, um, uh, what, what are the, 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 the paragons of your of stage, it, of, of bands who are really making it, who are generating revenue, who are happy with you? I think we're seeing that um, that the working musician, the working artist, is benefiting the most and realizing the most uh, value from our platform at this time. I definitely think that you're going to see larger artists continue to embrace it, but they're more, they don't, they're not, they're not recurring as much. They're meaningful, but they're not recurring as much. Whereas the the working artist we had, uh, Glenn Phillips, lead singer of Toe the Wet Sprocket, just gave a nice. Uh, uh, plug to us in a recent um, article about how he's able to make close to a thousand dollars every Sunday from his his couch. I mean, for him to be able to connect with his fans online, stay in touch, and be able to make that kind of money is from great. his couch, meaning that he performs mm -hmm. from his couch. He takes a laptop, he opens it up, and he basically starts playing. He sets up a time for a, an engagement, a scheduled engagement for his fans, like six o'clock tonight. They show up. He gets almost three hundred people to show up, and and, and three hundred <clears> people. <throat> Three dollars a piece generates a thousand dollars or four dollars a piece. Yeah, and they tip on top. He do, he roughly does close to a fifteen hundred dollar gross, and of which at the end he takes his sixty uh, percent. Evan, I know you have argued in the past that what's changed most of all in the music business is the relationship between the audience and the artist. Presumably, the success of stage it reflects that. A hundred percent, and and the, and the success of, yeah of not just each individual artist on our platform, but us as a company with our relationship with the artist is important as well. But I think that, <clears throat> um, I will say that what's, our secret sauce, someone asked me a while ago, our secret sauce is really getting out of the way of the artist and the fan. I don't think that, rela I think that relationship had some healing to do, and, and we're allowing it to heal, because when you put an artist and a fan directly together, the magic is amazing. It's always been there. We've just caused the issues between the artist and the fan. And so in a digital age now, we're able to operate in sort of the agent or the manager way, but uh, very understanding and, and get out of the way but let, and let them connect with each other, but help support both sides and respect what, what both are looking for. Evan, is the success, or perhaps imminent financial success of Stage It, does it reflect the end of the problem of piracy? It doesn't reflect the end of piracy. I think you always have piracy, but one of the things I said back when we met last time is that you can't pirate intimacy and you can't pirate an experience. Um, and so we believe that we are an answer to what's going on. I mean, obviously, whether where, wherever you stand on the value of static content, um, you certainly it's difficult to monetize it. Um, we're basically saying that their copyright laws are real, but we're taking a different approach and saying we're hitting common ground between an artist and a fan, and that they both understand the value of time. And we're selling time. That's what we're selling. Artist time. So Evan, are you uh, is, is Stage It purely self-financed, or have you raised money? A uh, combination of both. Um, we have to date we're angel invested, but uh, angel funded rather, and I've been an investor myself. Um, and Who are the angels? You wouldn't. The only there's only two angels you probably know, and that's uh, Jimmy Buffett and uh, Sean Parker. Sean Parker, who's that? 
Right. Uh, Sean so Parker's invested in staging. Now I'm going to take you really seriously. Okay, that sounds good. How much money did he put in? I, I, you have to ask him. And Jimmy Buffett as well. He's Jimmy a big Buffett deal. As well. Yeah, he's fantastic. They're both fantastic. Um, and I sort of think that's interesting about interesting thing about Sean and Jimmy is that Jimmy's a music icon that loves technology, and uh, Sean's a technology icon that loves music. So it's sort of cool. How does uh, um, Sean's investment connect, perhaps, with Spotify and any strategic relationship you might have with them? You know, I don't know yet. I, um, I, I've, I've spoken to the Spotify folks a couple of times, and there could be something very interesting there as well. At this time, we haven't, you know, sort of taken advantage of that yet. Um, but uh, I think Sean really believes that the live music space is a, the live video is going to be a huge thing, and I think in particular live music uh, on the internet. Is there any connection between his investment in 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 uh, Stage It and Airtime? Um, I, I spent some time with those guys yet, and we've been talking about a potential. Play. I've seen what they're doing, and it's very interesting, and it could be an amazing integration for what we're doing, but we haven't done anything yet. Are you still taking money? Uh, we are. Do you have something you want to give me now? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Evan, uh, I hope I'll see you this time next year at uh, SF Music Tech. Where do you hope Stage It will be at that point? Profitable, you say? Profitable, and I believe that by, ne by next year you'll see us, we'll be uh, moved into some uh, more verticals, like comedians, some chefs, authors. We're just about to. Authors? Yeah, were you interested? Absolutely. Okay, well, you'll be able to read a chapter of your book and, and take live questions from your, from your readers. Oh, maybe I'll see you in less than a year. Evan yeah. Lowenstein, Thank founder you. and CEO of Stage It. Thank you so much for appearing on TechCrunch TV. Thank you so much, Andrew.